This is fascinating. OpenAI calls DeepSeek state controlled and it called for banning of all the models coming out of China. They shared this in their pro policy proposal to the Office of Science and Technology Policy. The report is controversial because of DeepSeek, but there are some very interesting statistics. They are intentionally trying to confuse the DeepSeek API with their open weight models. And also they have a very interesting take on copyright laws. Now they want to present DeepSeek R1 as a real threat, but also is trying to downplay their importance. So here they say, the recent release of DeepSeek R1's model is so noteworthy, not because of its capabilities, which is R1's reasoning capabilities are impressive, but are at best on par with the several US models, but as a gauge of the state of this competition. And the competition is the race towards AGI. Now we're going to look at some of these controversial takes, but first let me share some very interesting statistics, which OpenAI thinks in terms of the economic opportunities that AI presents. So more than seven in 10 parents in the US believe children today will be worse off financially than they are, which is true. Nine in 10 US parents thinks it's important for their kids to learn how to use AI for their future jobs, but eight in 10 say that this is not happening or they don't know if it is happening. And three and four college aged AI users wants to use AI in their education, but the formal education is not catching up to AI. OpenAI also has an interesting take when it comes to copyright laws. But, but first, uh, some interesting takes on scaling laws and test time compute, as well as the reduction in training and inference cost. So they say, the intelligence of an AI model roughly equals the log of resources used to train and run it. Until recently, scaling progress was primarily coming from training compute and data, but with some recent models like O1, O3, R1, and a lot of these other reasoning or thinking models, they have shown that intelligence scale from inference compute as well. And the scaling laws that predict these gains are incredibly precise over many orders of magnitude. So that's why they are encouraging more and more investment in AI. So more money spent on training and test time compute will result in more capable models. At least that's the theory. And it's also going to have a huge socioeconomic impact. Okay, the second one is related to the cost of both training these models and inference. So the cost to using uh, a given level of AI capability falls about 10x every 12 months and uh, lower prices leads to much more use. This aligns very well with uh, something that Anthropic has suggested that every year you see a 10x cost reduction in training these models. They say that we saw uh, this in the change in the token cost between GPT-4 in early 2023 and GPT-40 in mid-2024. So over a span of just over a year, they saw a 150x cost reduction, which is pretty crazy. Now, this is talking about same level of intelligence or capabilities because GPT-4.5 has ballooned in the cost when it comes to cost per tokens. The third one is the time the AI takes to improve relative to human intelligence. So they said the typical time it takes for a computer to beat humans at a given benchmark has fallen from 20 years after the benchmark was introduced to five years and now to one or two years. And we see no reason why those advancements will stop in near future. ARC AGI uh, a benchmark is a perfect example of this. Uh, where OpenAI's O1 showed dramatic improvement on the performance, although it came at a higher uh, compute cost at uh, test time compute. And according to OpenAI, this will lead to AGI. And that's where the most interesting parts of the proposal actually starts. So they talk about democratic AI, and also they talk about preventing governments to use AI tools to amass power and control their citizen or to threaten or coerce other states. Now, later in the report, they actually make a case for working more closely with the governments. Now, according to OpenAI, CCP or the Chinese government is working on taking a lead on America by 2030. And they say 
that's why the recent release of deep seek r1 model is so noteworthy not because of the capabilities but as a gauge of the state of the computation so it's really good that they actually acknowledge deep seek which is a relatively new player and much smaller player and now the second part is i think a little disingenuous so they uh, building on top of deep seek models is in critical infrastructure and other high risk use cases given the potential that deep seek could be compelled by ccp to manipulate its uh, models to cause harm now they are intentionally confusing models with the apis that deep seek is providing deep seek r1 is an open source model anybody can deploy the model in a tight infrastructure and nothing is going to be shared with DeepSeq or CCP. On the other hand, OpenAI is a closed source model. So whatever you do, uh, OpenAI actually has access to the data. Uh, now, they say that they are not going to use certain data for training, but it's essentially just relying on their words. Then they say, and because the DeepSeq is simultaneously uh, state subsidized, state controlled, and freely available, at the end, the cost to its user is their privacy and security as DeepSeek faces requirements under Chinese law to comply with demand for user data and use it to train more capable system for the CCP use. Now, I'm personally not sure if it's state subsidized or state controlled, but it's true that it's freely available and you can run the model on your own infrastructure if you have the money. So there is no way DeepSeek is going to compel you or DeepSeek is going to be compelled to share your data if you're running it in your own environment. Again, intentionally confusing models with the APIs. Next, uh, OpenAI is trying to make a case for relaxing regulations and having more access to copyright data. They are uh, treating China as a competitor. So uh, they say that China has uh, several advantages uh, including its ability to marshal resources, data, energy, technical talent, and enormous sums needed to build out its own domestic chip development. But on the other hand, uh, US has a lot of regulations. Even the individual states have regulations, which are modeled on the EU um, Regulation of AI Act. And according to OpenAI, uh, these regulations may also weaken the quality and level of training data available to American entrepreneurs and usefulness of downstream consumers and businesses. Next, the uh, People's Repo Republic of China is uh, unlikely to respect IP regimes of any of such nations or uh, training of its AI system, but already likely has access to all the same data, putting American AI labs at comparative disadvantage while gaining little in a way of protections for the original IP creators. And while America maintains a lead on the AI today, DeepSeek shows that our lead is not wide and is narrowing. The AI action plan should ensure the American-led AI prevails over CCP-led AI, securing both American leadership on AI and brighter future for all Americans. So in simple word, it's us versus them. Now, what exactly does OpenAI propose in order to address this? The first thing that they propose is a holistic approach that enables voluntarily partnerships between the federal government and the private sector and neutralizes the potential uh, uh, PRC benefits from American AI companies having to comply with overly burdensome state laws. So in fact, they want to work more closely with federal government and they also want other companies to work more closely with federal government that really takes away all the freedoms and whenever you see uh, something voluntarily down the line it's not going to be very voluntarily anymore next they want to have export control strategy on anything that you can use for training ai models and they want to export democratic ai they also propose a tier-based system for what that democratic AI is going to look like. Now, I'm not going to bother you with the details. They actually have a highly detailed description of what they think this democratic AI tier-based system is going to look like. And next, they talk about their proposal on copyright strategy that promotes the freedom to learn. I don't even know what they mean, freedom to learn. 
They say, we propose a copyright strategy that would extend the system's role in the intelligence age by protecting the rights and interests of content creators while also protecting America's AI leadership and national security. The federal government can both secure Americans' freedom to learn from AI and avoid forfeiting our AI lead to PRC by preserving American AI models' ability to learn from copyrighted material. So, in summary, they want to be able to use copyrighted material to train their AI. And they want help from the federal government to enable that. The next proposal is to build all the infrastructure that is going to be needed to make this dream come true. Now, if you go into more details of this proposal, they explicitly ask for export controls, which, is, which are going to be based on this multi-tier setup and have the ability to use copyright materials to train their models. They also want to work more closely with the federal government, including Department of Defense. So to summarize, OpenAI is against openweight models coming out of China or any model coming out of China for that matter. They want to have access to copyright material to train their model. They want to develop democratic AI systems while closely working with federal government and pushing their values on the rest of the world. This document is a fascinating read and I'll highly recommend everybody to have a look. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.